Hi, this is Robbie with Tinker Photography. Uh, today we're going to go through a little tutorial of what I go through before a beach like bikini photography shoot. I did one this past weekend and there are a couple pointers that I thought could help other people preparing to do a similar type of shoot. So the first thing you have to consider is before you get to the beach, before you do anything, you want to talk to your model and make sure they understand you're dealing with the elements, you're going to be on the beach, and you want to help them be prepared. So have them pick out a couple like bikini photos that they like, of shots that they may want to do something similar to. Have them practice those expressions, those poses in the mirror so they kind of know what they're doing before they get there. This is if they're an amateur or semi-experienced, uh, but it'll help them kind of uh, get the results that we're looking for. Second thing that I like to do, I bring a speaker, some kind of music source with me to photo shoots. So I ask them to prepare an iPod or their phone or something with some music that they like. And then they can bring that with them and it kind of gets them into the groove, into the mood of shooting and it loosens them up quicker when they're out there. Then another thing you want to do is ask them to wear something very loose, maybe no bra or something for at least an hour or two before the actual shoot because if they change from like tight-fitting clothes into a bikini they're going to have the clothing lines all over their body and you can remove them in Photoshop but why? It's just easier to have them wear something really loose beforehand and also have them bring a couple changes of clothes and a giant beach towel if there's nowhere really close for them to change so someone can hold a beach towel for them and they can change in that real quick. So that's a couple things for you to convey to your model before the shoot even begins. For me as a photographer, there's a bunch of preparation steps also. So first and foremost, know where you're going to shoot, pre-scout the location, know the tide and the weather of the actual shoot day, and try to scout the location at the same tide as when you're going to be uh, actually doing the shoot, because there's nothing worse than going to a really cool location and the tide's up four feet and the location's gone. So know the location, know what it's going to be like at that particular tide, and if the tide's coming up, going down, what the surf level is, just be aware of your environment. Because you're dealing with nature, there's unexpected element, you never quite know what you're going to get. So you want to know as many variables as possible to try and account for them. For me, I'm going to be in the surf a little bit, I'm going to be running around, I'm probably going to get a little bit wetter than the model. So I'll wear swimming trunks and light flip flops and then take those shoes off when I'm actually doing the shoot all over the place. Don't be afraid to get wet, just be aware of the environment. Have your model and your assistants be on the look as if a photographer is in the surf or up to their knees and have them Always keep a, an eye out for a giant wave coming your direction so they can warn you and you can run out of the way. I had that happen in a little while, I'll show you. For me on the beach, one of the most important elements is having a couple assistants. At least one, but two or three is better. I like to use natural light if I can, which means using giant reflectors. I typically like the gold side of reflectors. But you're on the beach, there's weather, there's wind, a reflector is not going to stay put on a light stand. And because of you're on the beach and there's salt water and stuff, I typically don't use strobes. Sometimes I'll have them in a Ziploc bag just in case, but light stands won't work, they're going to get washed away. So you need an assistant holding something. So I'll use a reflector because they're really cheap and the assistant can stand in the surf and, and it's no big deal if everything gets wet or ruined, whatever, you can buy a new one, they're 10 bucks. So with my two assistants, I'll typically have one stand somewhat close to me shoot with a gold reflector illuminating the front of our model. And then I'll have the second assistant behind the model kind of providing a rim light with a nice gold um, light from the gold side of the reflector. It looks really good. But sometimes your assistants are amateurs, you're just friends, whoever you can rope into going with you. So here I had my brother and my good photographer friend, so we had to show my brother how to use one of these reflectors for the very first time, but he picked it up quick, they're not that hard. And your assistants will get wet, so make sure they're wearing swim trunks and flip-flops and barefoot, whatever, but they're going to get wet, so make sure they're aware of that so they're not totally surprised by this. Just 
Uh, let's make it easy. For lenses, I'll like to start off with something a little bit wider, so a 24 to 72.8. This forces me to be a little bit closer to the model in the beginning. It helps build a little bit of rapport, and it's just you're not standing a mile away. You can actually communicate with the model while she's getting warmed up, getting into the groove, and I find that helps. Provides a little bit different perspective with a wide angle. You have to be aware of any type of distortion your lens may provide. But then later on in the shoot, I'll switch to a longer lens, a 7200, and then I'll put her out in the waves, get her wet while I stay dry. It's nice to have one of your assistants that is kind of a goofball or is uh, can help make your model laugh because a lot of the times your assistant holding the reflector is going to be closer to the model than I am as a photographer. I'm standing back finding an angle or down low something and the assistant providing the rim lights right next to her. So it's really handy if they can crack jokes or just be sociable to help bring out a natural smile or something. So just trying to stress the importance of a really good assistant or two. They will change everything. They'll make it so much better. So now we're going to go and get started with this shoot. We'll go and get the music playing. And also, depending on the location, if it's kind of a shady or scary part of town, you might want to have one of your assistants always keep an eye on the camera bag or just the model's bag of clothes, something, because you never know. But we were in a nice location, so it wasn't that necessary. So I brought my GoPro down to the beach so I could record this shoot and kind of give you an idea of what we went through. So our first step was to teach my assistants how to use, or teach my brother how to use his reflector, and then we started shooting. We brought our model down right on the beach, and just to get warmed up we took a couple simple shots so everyone could figure out how lighting worked, and then we, dis we discovered that along the side of this wall there was this green moss growing. And when you hit it with a gold reflector, it really lit up and changed color, it, it glowed, and it didn't really distract too much from the model, it was a cool effect. So, next we started, started shooting against that cliff, and you can see the water's a little bit cold for the model. And then we walked over to the other side, and unfortunately we forgot to turn the camera. So, have one of your assistants keep an eye on the camera to turn it. Here are a few shots that we took while we were up against that other wall. And you can also see where the tide is at this point. It's going to be coming in quite a bit. So now we took a little bit of a break. We were waiting for the sun to come down a bit. But it actually provided a cool opportunity. I put a towel down and we were talking to the model and I had her sit down. And then we did a couple shots while she was sitting down on the towel. Uh, she was looking directly into the sun, so we took one of the five, the middle of the 5-in-1 reflectors and used it as a scrim to cover her with a nice even shadow, and then we used a reflector from behind to illuminate her, and that provided a really nice effect. And here are some of the shots from right here while she's laying down. You can see they turned out really nice. And there I kind of modeled the pose that I had seen before for the model so she could try and replicate it. It's always fun to model for the model. You do this, it's entertaining to watch, that's for sure. It was a little bit interesting because we had to watch our shadows very carefully. The, um, my assistant in the back providing the rim light was casting a shadow on the side we actually wanted, so I had to have him move over to the other side of the model to stop casting that giant shadow in the background. So now my assistant and I went over to the other side, back to the other cliff. We were experimenting with different lighting con concepts. We saw that a shadow would be cast from a person that actually looked pretty cool on the wall. So we thought we would uh, try and have the model go over there and have the same uh, shadow cast, maybe to, uh, almost a silhouette of her body cast on the wall behind her. So that's why we disappear for a little while right here. And this is why a second assistant is really nice to keep your model entertained while you're off trying to figure something out. So now we're about to move over to our to the second location that we're 
doing uh, next to the cliff. We're just waiting for the sun to come down a little bit more to change the lighting, to warm it up just a smidge. We're getting close to sunset. We're at the golden hour right now. And here we are back against that cliff trying to cast the shadow um, on the wall behind the model. And some of these turned out really nice. We're also trying to shift things up. For the first half, we were pretty much going straight on on the model. So the second half, we're using this wall for her to lean up against to try and get a little bit of her backside, uh, just because she was absolutely gorgeous. So now we're getting a little bit closer to the water, a little bit different angle. We saw a cave behind here that was kind of neat, but more of this green moss that provided a really cool contrast that we liked. And as you can see, my assistant in the back there was getting soaked. I've also switched to the 70 to 200 at this point to try and get a little bit further away and to compress the background with more bokeh. So now we're at our last kind of scene where we have the model in the water. That's something to keep in mind. Have the model stand up first for a lot of shots before you get them down in the water or dirty because it's really difficult to clean them off and they're going to be cold and miserable. So save those scenes for last. And here she's freezing. So that's a wrap. That was a little walkthrough of this photo shoot that I did this past weekend. I hope you found this somewhat useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.